What's going on guys, it's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Poker room, Venetian here right now, and we're gonna play some cash. Mixing it up finally, my goodness. Uh, it's been a long time since we actually played some cash, and uh, it's gonna be a good change of pace. It's a 510 running right now, and it might be a good time also playing with our buddy Mariano as well. So fireworks might be in the air tonight. Hopefully you guys enjoy. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. That like button always is really helpful to help the channel grow, so thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you like the cash videos and uh, playing some 510, good change of pace from the, all the tournaments. We'll see how we run. We strapped into this 510 game at the Venetian, and first hand, I haven't even gotten my chips yet. I pick up Ace King of Diamonds in middle position, so, so starting things off very hot with a good hand, I raise it up to $40. We get the cutoff to make the call. And like I said, can't put chips out because this is my first hand dealt and the chip runners haven't given me my chips yet. It's this early into the session. Going to a flop of King, Queen, Nine, Two Spades and a Diamond and a good flop for us, I put out a bet of $60. For 60, he makes the call and going to a turn which comes a deuce. Doesn't change the board at all and I decide to start with a check now on this turn. He bets out $130, and I'm happy to just make the call again. I have top pair and the best kicker, certainly not folding. We're off to a river, which comes another king. Oh, this is going to be pretty cool. So with the line I've taken by checking the turn, I think just checking this river makes the most sense, although I would hate to see him check back. But I check this one. He checks it back. Sadly, I show my hand and win. So right off the bat, starting things off with more chips than we started with. In the next hand, picking up ace-10 of spades and plus one, got a good hand to play with, I open it up to $40. For 40, now this cutoff player, same player as before, he three bets us to 160. Folds back to me and we're playing pretty deep for a 5-10 game, I decide to make the call and see a flop out of position. The flop comes 3-3 three, three, deuce, two diamonds. I check it over to him on this paired board and he bets out 130. I pretty much expect him to bet every single hand he's going to 3-bet in this spot, and that contains a lot of hands that beat us, like pocket pairs or even better ace-x holdings, or it can contain a lot of trash, like some diamond draws or some like jack-10 suited and suited connectors, stuff like that that we have crushed. So I call and see a 6 of diamonds on the turn, and now when action goes check-check, feeling a little bit suspicious about how strong his holding is, we're off to a river which is the king of diamonds. I have completely nothing. It's not great to not even have a single diamond in hand, but when I think about it, I find him to be very happy to bet this turn card if he did have a diamond of some sort, some sort of offsuit Broadway holdings or even a pocket pair. So I decided to fire out into the abyss. Firing blind, I bet out $450 close to pot, and he goes well into the tank. His thinking cap is on, and then he ends up talking, talks out his thoughts. He says he snap folds this hand normally, but he's only thinking so long because it's me. So that's nice. Always nice to get a compliment about that, thinking that I bluff a lot. But ultimately, he ends up folding. And of course, after his speech play saying he normally folds super quickly, but because it's me and I like to bluff a lot, make videos on YouTube, I've got to show my garbage. I show him the bluff. I trade my cards for more chips with the dealer. And it's nice to chip up early on here in the session. In the following hand, picking up ace-king offsuit once again, we're on the button and there's a $20 mandatory straddle now on this table. Action starts with the cutoff player, our buddy Mariano. He opens it up to $50. Beautiful spot to three bets and let's play a big one. I three bet to 150. We get the small blind and straddler to both make the call for 150. Wow, we've got action ensuing and back to Mariano to close out the action and he says, hell no. He decides to reopen the action, putting in a four bet to $650. Essentially, music to our ears. Everyone here starting give or take has about $2,000 in stack, and it's a straddle, so everyone's got 100 big blinds. Pretty easy decision now, considering that Mariano is capable of four betting light against all of this action. I have a really good hand and not much to play for behind if I make the call. I just rip it all in. Everyone snap folds, and wow, that's really nice to pick up about a thousand dollars in this hand without even seeing a flop. Add that thousand bucks onto my stack and ready to use it in the next hand. 
All right, there's an interruption in the video because it means I'm probably gonna sell out again, but this time I swear it's for a good cause because it's a friendly reminder that the luck box is back. These t-shirts and hoodies are available, of course, but also these car protectors. If you wanna grab them, click the link in the description below, but you got the red ones that are finally restocked after a very high demand of people asking for them. So they're restocked for a little bit. Also, I got these green ones for the Christmas special, of course. So red and green holiday Christmas colors. And one way I wanted to celebrate the new merch was to also incorporate some of the old merch these ones I'm going to be giving away to anybody who orders more than $50 on the website. For all orders over $49, I'm going to be giving away these light blue and gray custom poker chips. These were the very first things of merch. I don't know why they can't focus. Very first things of merch that I've ever created on the channel and I had some left over and I thought it'd be a good idea to include them as a thank you. Um, definitely some of the OG stuff that I had and I had a bunch of these lying around. So. If you want to grab them, help support the channel, I'm going to be throwing away these into the package as well. Click the link in the description below. It's rampagepokerstore.com. And yeah, these were really popular. I'm glad you guys liked them a bunch. Happy to ship them out ASAP. Unfortunately, I can't promise Christmas Day shipping. You're not going to get them tomorrow, but you'll get them as soon as I can package them out, which is pretty quick. So thanks so much for the support and supporting the channel. It means a ton. Hope you all have a happy holidays with your family and friends, and let's get back to the poker hands. We're off into the next hand with Pocket Kings in the big blind, and there's a cutoff open to 60. Button makes the call, and oh my God, our buddy Mariano just doesn't seem to learn, does he? He three bets to $300. <laughs> oh, it's time to get it in with another big pot with him, hopefully. I put in that four ball, baby, four bet to $750. Action folds around to him. Mariano makes the call. We're off to see a flop now, this time playing a big one against our buddy. The flop comes eight, six, four, two spades and a club. He checks to me and this board texture doesn't seem too relevant in this four bet pot. I'm praying he might either have a spade draw or just a smaller pocket pair like queens or jacks. I bet out $600 and for this price, he decides on a call. When the turn comes the six of clubs, he checks for a second time and this is pretty much one of the best turn cards I could ask for. It brings in two flush draws, but the board is paired. So now we essentially have the nuts in this board and how the hand played out. And I look at my buddy stack, Mariano's got about 2,300 in there and I go for all of it. All in. I rip it all in as I expect him to have a lot of queens, jacks, tens, or some higher pocket pairs that may be a little too sticky to fold. And now he goes into the tank forever. When you're putting players into the tank and making them think for a long time, you're doing something right at the very least. Unlike last time, I actually want a call here. And ultimately, he ends up taking the thinking cap off and folds. I'll take it. Chipping up big time, he later on told us that he had a flush draw and ended up folding, so happy to just win this one. Although getting a call would've been really nice as well. Chipping up big time and we're up a bunch early on in the session. So the game has officially moved to 1020 in stakes. I add on more as it's uncapped now for the buy-in. I'm officially in for 9,000 total. One of the first hands of 1020 we play, picking up 10-8 of spades in the small blind, under the gun opens it up to $60. Action folds to me, and I've got a fun hand to play. I'm trying to get a little frisky, get a little out of line. I put in a three bet and raise here to $250, wanting to do this with some worse hands like this. Anyways, this under the gun player makes the call, and we're off to a flop of Ace 8 8 Rainbow. Wow. Getting absolutely rewarded after raising some trash holdings. I bet out a small amount of $170, hoping praying he has a hand like ace king ace queen that's just a strong ace that would be cool and for 170 he makes the call we're off to a turn which is the seven of hearts note we are playing extremely deep and i'd love to get more money in the middle with a very disguised trips put him on some sort of strong ace holdings so i bet out 650 dollars and for this amount he thinks ends up putting more chips in the middle and calls very ideal with how this hand's going so far. When the river comes, the five of hearts, the backdoor heart draw gets there. It's certainly not ideal. 
but I'm trying to get value and I can't be afraid of flushes. I have an eight and I'm trying to get ace king, ace queen to make the call and decide on an overbet amount. I size up to 2,500. I think the sizing is going to get a lot of non-believing strong aces to obviously make the call. And if there's ever a chance that we're up against the full house or flush or something like that, then, um, you know, that would really suck. But anyways, he thinks, and then, wow, does something unexpected, and that is an all-in. Oh, God. The total of how much his all-in is, is $6,260. And now I am one in the tank forever, putting on my thinking cap and just really, really confused. How does this player ever have a flush here? Maybe like ace king or ace queen of hearts makes the most sense, but even then on a paired board, would you really wanna commit your whole stack with nut flush here? So I think about it for a while and I don't know, is this player crazy enough to turn ace king offsuit ace queen offsuit with the ace of hearts into a bluff like is that ever a thing does he ever have just pocket sevens potentially pocket fives is not really much into the equation i don't think and yeah i'm stuck i have trips i have a really strong hand but facing this jam over my overbet on the river seems extremely strong and there's not a ton of hands that we lose to Considering I don't think a lot of flushes would raise or go all in on this board, he's pretty much just repping full houses or potentially just be a sicko turning a strong ace of hearts into a bluff. Ultimately, it's about 4,000 more for me to call and, oh, I don't know. It's close, I think, to a certain degree. It's just not great that we also lose the flushes that could potentially play this way. I'm confused and when I'm confused, I just go for it, close my eyes, toss a chip in the middle and hope trips is good, but no. To no avail, he shows us pocket aces, so pretty much an ultimate cooler here on the flop. Could have found a way to get away from it on the river here and not pay him off an extra 4,000, but here we are, sadly, um, losing a monster monster pot that didn't go our way, and just like that, we're down a little bit on the session and time to crawl out of the hole. Gonna do my best to crawl out and picking up pocket queens next in the hijack. Under the gun, Mariana opens up to $50. I decide on making the call here considering I've been super aggressive against him and I don't know, man. After we just lost a big pot, I'm probably not playing my best. Make the call and my call allows the player to my left, the button and big blind to call. So we're going multi-way to a flop of jack high two diamonds. Action surprisingly checks to me and I've got an over pair and I wanna bet huge. Obviously, I want to look like I'm steaming, and I might be, but with pocket queens and an overpair, clearly betting for value. I size up to $200, and only the button player makes the call, which is nice, because it looks like I'm going to get some revenge, because this is the same person I just lost the massive pot to. We're off to a turn, which is the 10 of clubs, brings in two flush draws, and doesn't really improve a whole lot besides jack 10. I can't be afraid of losing two big pots in a row. Let's just size up and I bet huge once again to $600. And for 600, once again, he decides on a call. And we're off to a river, which is the ace of diamonds. And you know, this is just horrible. Obviously an overcard over our pair, a diamond for completing the flush draw. And I guess seeing the diamond is okay since it is an ace and he doesn't have the nut flush draw. So I debate on checking or betting, and you know, I always like putting money in the middle. I'm gonna go for some thin value and attempt to get money against a non-believing jack. I bet small here, just $300, and he calls pretty quickly. I show my hand, expect to be good, and no. He shows us ace jack off suits, rivers us, and now definitely, definitely, definitely not happy to get sucked out in this fashion and a little more salt in the wound against the same player that we just dusted off over $7,000 to. <sighs> Mid-session update. Here we are. Uh, I'm in my own room here at the Palazzo actually, so that's always nice to go upstairs and decompress for a little bit. And I think on the walk after those two hands, I'm going to choose violence and I'm going to choose war and I'm going to keep grinding it out yeah i'm not down a ton a ton not as much as i should be because i was up a decent amount after that big hand um stupid call with an eight i think realistically just not good enough to fold it and yeah gotta be better and figured out i mean i thought about it for a long time and it's like full houses are 
unlikely, but obviously a possibility, but mainly losing to flushes and couldn't even beat flushes. So, you know, stupid call for an extra 4,000 and that's on me. Now it's uncapped and I think uh, gonna go for blood or max pain and that's it. I feel like my back is up against the wall and I'm gonna go full throttle and get after it. So gonna add on a lot more and uh, I don't know, maybe just empty out everything I got and put it on the table. Cause I think, um, I think that's what I'm gonna do. It's gonna be a long night. Hopefully you're in for a, a fun vlog because this one's gonna be action packed, more action packed than it already has been. After a little break, I add on for $21,000 more no more fucking around this time. I'm in for 30,000. We're going to battle, going for war to get my chips back. One of the first hands after sitting back down after a small break, I look down at Queen 10 offsuit on the button and there's a $40 straddle on board. There's a hijack player who limps and I'm in position. I wanna play more hands, so I call and do Olympi poos as well. This entices the big blind to call and the straddler checks his options. So four ways Olympi poo pots of 10, 10, five rainbow. Cool. Nice, nice warm welcome back with trips here. The hijack who was first to limp bets out $200. Pretty darn big of a sizing. I'm not gonna do anything but just make the call. I think a raise is a little bit of an overplay and also folds out his bluffs. Everyone else folds and we're off to a turn which is the ace of clubs. He checks now, which is just really strange. Not sure what's going on here, but I'm gonna continue betting and I bet out $240 for value. He thinks and ends up making the call. So he certainly could have an ace potentially, although I don't see that checking the turn, but most likely I think he might have some smaller pocket pair. Anyways, the river is now a king. So this is pretty good as it's pretty unlikely that I'm beat against ace 10 or king 10 and having a queen in hand blocks queen jack so he doesn't have a straight too often. He checks again now and here I'm definitely gonna bet for value, but unsure about the sizing. I don't think a small pocket pair is going to call a small bet regardless. So I decide to blast it. $3,000 to go. It's 3x pot and he calls super quickly. Okay, I don't know what this means, but I just blasted it. I show my hand and he mucks. He said he had ace king, which sure, I can believe you, but I'll take the 3,000. Somehow we got paid after a 3x pot bet. Uh, maybe I had a great run out or I don't know what happened here in this hand, but I'll take it and take the pot. So at least one hand went our way and in this hand, picking up ace five of hearts and plus one, I raise it up to $120 with the $40 straddle on. The player on my left makes the call and action folds to the small blinds, our lovely, lovely friend Mariano. He hasn't learned his lesson yet and puts in a three bet to 750. Christ, that, that's a really large bet, sir. That wasn't too friendly. Given the configuration and I raise from early position here when action folds to me, this is just a really good hand to four bet bluff, I think. And I'm gonna go for it against our buddy. And uh, you know, I know he can be doing this light sometimes. I close my eyes and put out a larger amount in the middle. It is $1,800. It's a little nerve wracking to be honest because it's $1,800, almost two grand in the middle as a pure bluff. But at least the player on my left folds as I didn't think he was too strong. Then Mariano decides to fold an ace face up. I'm happy to see that. His ace was probably better than ace five and I'm happy to show the five ski for fun. So I take down this pots and another almost thousand dollars racked up without seeing a flop. For one of the last interesting hands of the night, I look down at pocket tens in the small blind. The $40 straddle is on once again. There's a plus one open to $100. Action folds to me, and here I kind of got a little confused. In tournaments, I think it's supposed to be a call. Deep stack poker seems like a sin to just make the call here with such a strong hand out of position, but I go for it. I don't know. Whatever. Sue me. I make the call and the under gun player calls as well. So three ways to a flop of Jack 10, eight, two clubs rewarded with middle set, And this board is ultra wet. So this flop is pretty cool for us. Action checks this plus one player. He continues with a bet of $150 and considering how draw heavy that this flop is, I want to put in a raise. I want to get more money in the middle. If we're beat, we obviously have outs to a full house. And if we're up against some strong draws, certainly want to get all the money in the middle as well. So I put in a check raise to 550. This under the gun player folds 
And this plus one player thinks has about 2200 in stack and ships it. Easy call for us. And we're going to a run out. The run out comes deuce, deuce. We boat up and this player shows us six, seven of clubs. Ends up rivering a flush, but it doesn't matter. Our full house is going to win. And we end off the night scooping a few pretty big pots after losing a massive one. And there just might be a chance that we crawled out of this deep hole that we dug ourselves in. Let's go to the outro to find out. Oh, Jesus Christ. Thanks for sticking to the end. Uh, this session was an absolutely ridiculous roller coaster ride. End of the day, let's just go over the numbers because I think that's what you guys all want to know. In for 30,000, out for 31.5. <sighs> Somehow found a way to crawl into some profit. Just like so silly. Just, just a silly, silly big game. Uncapped 1020 thing can... Uh, go off the rails a little bit. But if you guys enjoy these high stakes cash games here in Vegas, just hit that like button. It's always much appreciated. And yeah, I don't know what to say. Just let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I can't wait to see what you guys have to say about this one. Cause yeah, if you made it to the end, thanks so much. Cause uh, you know, this one was a little bit wild. So thanks so much for watching. As always, we've got videos coming every single Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.